Welcome to At the End of the Day. I'm Nicole with my co-host Sean, and we're going to talk about today a tipping incident that happened where a family was put out of a restaurant. Well, not even put out of the restaurant. The no, police were, was called on them they before locked. they got put out of the restaurant because they were actually locked in the restaurant yes, for not um, complying with a tipping rule the restaurant had listed on their uh, menu. And you, as many of you know, if you go out with a large party, sometimes a restaurant mm -hmm. will print on a menu parties of six or more, whatever number they choose, we will add a gratuity of... 18 percent. I think in this case it was 17 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, and the family did not agree with that at the end of the meal because they felt like the service was severely lacking. After they ate. I think, now when I think about that, I'm, I definitely understand their complaint. But from what I was reading, I felt like they should have told the manager or somebody right. earlier in the meal so that it could have possibly been corrected. Mm -hmm. Or they would have known that this was coming instead of waiting till the end of the meal to Absolutely. address their concerns. Like really, yeah. When you get when you're receiving terrible service, it didn't happen at the end of the meal. Exactly. Obviously. So either you tell the manager or you leave. You exactly. don't sit there eat, then get the bill and say I'm not going to pay the gratuity. Right. But what also and, and even with me saying that, do you think that's cause for them to be locked in the restaurant? Who does that? <laughs> they said they're going to get their money. <laughs> I, I, I mean, and then that goes into that whole conversation that a lot of people say, and this was a black family, right, of course. where black people have been stereotyped as not being good tippers or not tipping at all. Mm -hmm. And I know when I go out, I sometimes go out with folks who overcompensate for everybody black. They feel like they got to overcompensate and tip for the folks who supposedly aren't tipping. And I get mad about that. And I'll be like, no, we're not tipping that much. Right. That's ridiculous. But I've, always known people to tip i i don't know where that comes from but i also do know that one or two black people can do something and then everybody black well, is accused of it and, uh i just got to keep it all the way real mm -hmm. the real issue with tipping in black folks are church black folks on sunday okay they call that hell day a lot of people who work oh, in the I didn't even know that. restaurant industry because, yeah, a lot of, you know, people come from church and they go to these restaurants and they're not tipping. Okay. Uh, a lot of people that I know that go to church tip like $2, no matter what the ticket value okay. is. So, I mean, there's a little credence there, but then to say that all black people every day of the right. week are not tipping, that's absolutely ridiculous. So, do you think that they were right to get locked in a restaurant? No, I don't think you lock anybody in a restaurant because I don't think it's illegal not to tip. Correct. But that's the thing. You know what I mean? And even if it was illegal, you're not the police. Right. So, you, so. yeah, that was crazy. That part was crazy. Right. I, I just, I don't, I don't understand that. Um, but I do think they should have addressed it earlier. I'm not saying that they didn't get bad service, but you just got to address it earlier in your right. meal. So for all of you who don't enjoy your service or you think that your service is whack, do not just eat the food and stay and not say anything and not tip. <laughs> and it could have been me. <laughs> I know I leave. am. Right. I'm going to leave. Leave I'm not gonna or say, anything say something. Because you might spit in my food. And that's, well, and that's the catch 22 of it. Yeah, leave. Get out. <laughs> you don't want to tip it. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We'll come back after this break. Thank you for joining us. Welcome back to the end of the day. And let's go into this story that's come out about John Travolta supposedly being gay or hitting on um, his masseuse. Two. Who oh. was a man. Two. And there have always been, two, exactly, there are two cases that have come up. There have always been rumors about John Travolta mm -hmm. supposedly being gay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure. This man has talked. He's given facts. He's even um, gave commentary on what John's um, genitalia penis looks like. <laughs> resembles and the pubic hair. Exactly. So I'm, <laughs> he said it it's was just, curly and unkept. Wow. It's really amazing. I'm really how interested but, to see how far this is gonna go. Right. Because I'm wondering, like, how long was you looking to know that though? Could you have been looking in shock, like, oh my God? Did you say this about Jones eight inches? Penis? I mean, you said you gave like a detail. Well, he might be a gay guy who get, who who would notice a man's penis and that could remember be. specifics. Right, if I, that could if be. I was a woman, a heterosexual woman, if I see a nice sized penis, I yeah, might remember. Yeah, you're going to probably know, know the details, absolutely. <laughs> but I guess he was offended, regardless that he was saying that uh, John Travolta touched him. And right. he was saying, come on, you need to do sexual favors. That's how I made it to where right. I'm at. He was like, supposedly John Travolta told him that's back in his welcome back car days, mm -hmm. that's what he did he to make it in Hollywood. In. Right. He said he would bust it wide. 
uh, he got low and wide. That's what he told the man. I, that, that is horrible. Yeah. I think if it's true. That, if it is true. It's a career. That's going to a whole nother conversation. But then it makes me think, is a career worth that? Because John Travolta has definitely done his thing in his career. Well, He's a force to be reckoned with. But I'm just wondering. I, I don't. But John can tell us. I don't know why. Right. He, he, don't, he don't need to. What do you think about the law? He's lost. So you think it holds validity? No. No. Because you're a masseuse. So I would think that if you really felt uh, like harassed or whatever, you could just quit. You could work mm. for somebody else. You don't have to work. And you kept showing up. Mm-hmm. I mean, hmm. That's just what I think. I mean, or was I'm that not your saying... little ace in the hole that you knew that? So that's why you kept showing up to well, keep that's... your job. And you know, I don't know. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, it could be true. I'm not because I'm not gonna put nothing past. I'm not gonna put anything past anybody. Anybody, right? But I mean, this was not. You're not working like a nine to five. You're like contracted. You probably mm-hmm. do other gigs and all that other kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Like so, this probably wasn't like your only breadwinning client. And, you know, probably, you know, once you get in those kind of circles, you kind of get other clients that are similar. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, hey, you could have just quit mm-hmm. or just not did it or sent, got to hire somebody else and send him over there. Well, and, and the thing about it in his, well, I, well, I would think so. Cause I was going to say in his lawsuit, I w- but didn't read really what it had upset him. But I think that is the premise of the lawsuit that it mm-hmm. was some type of, um, harassment. That he felt happened. Right. He said it was sexual battery. Exactly. That's what he called it. Exactly. I don't know. I just, I, it, it's, I feel sorry just for John's wife, for Kelly right. Preston, who has been with him for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, this can't be easy on her. Maybe she's used to it. I don't know how, you know, the dynamics yeah, of Hollywood. Yeah. She, she may be, be used to it, it and just like, oh, whatever. Or she may, hey, they may have an agreement. They you might. Know, this they is, might be open. Know, Weirder things have happened. Um, so I just Absolutely. think that's interesting. I'm interested to see how far this lawsuit is going to go. Will it come to fruition? And what is going to be John's response? I know his uh, PR people were saying it was untrue, but of we'll have to wait and see untrue. what happens in the future. Because I want to know who's going to say, yes, I did it. I touched his penis and I showed him mine. <laughs> thank you for, again. Thank you for joining us at the end of the day. And we'll be back after this break. Welcome back to at the end of the day. So there's been a call for FAMU to get rid of the ban in light of all the hazing allegations that have come about mm-hmm. because of the death of the um, drum major. Um, so what do you? Th- I mean, I'm, I'm just. I don't. I think hazing has been a culture in FAMU as it not, is a yeah. lot of schools um, and not just in, in the, America. Period. The um, fraternities and sororities. Right, mm-hmm. and I'm just. I don't think the whole ban should suffer, even though I do believe. That everybody knew it. I think Robert Champion, the guy who got killed, I think he was part of the hate. That's just me because to become the the drum major, the, what they call it, drum major, band major, mm-hmm. one of them, drum to major. become the drum major, to me, you had to be really involved in the whole realm of the band. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Even though his parents never saying that he was never involved, well, they don't know. which means they that's were. why he. They're saying that's why he was targeted because he was against hazing. Well, you know, parents don't know. That's Everything true. that kids do. I mean, let's keep it all the way real. Plus, he was in college, so who knows whether he knew about it or not. It still, you know, the hazing thing was is crazy, and I exactly. and I never really got it. I, you know, especially when you're talking about sororities and fraternities, because I don't know what hazing has to do with brotherhood and sisterhood. Mm-hmm. Um, so I understand. I, I feel I understand what you're saying, where you don't think that everybody should suffer because of the acts of. Some or few, but mm-hmm. unfortunately, one band, one sound, this band them all. Rap. That makes no sense. It does. How does that make sense? Because you have to, you have to dag on, uh, like, stand up for the fact that you're not going to allow Hazen to happen. So, fam, you just shouldn't have a band at all. Well, for a certain, I for guess, a certain for a certain amount time of time. Period. Yeah. Uh, why, unless they're going to start all over because how are you going you to You know prove? that many kids go to FAMU on hold band on, scholarships? Hold on. Can I say this to you? No, how sure, are you sure. going to prove who was involved and who wasn't? Because then that'll be, because all, all that happens at this point will be finger pointing. Well, that's what they're doing now. Right. And there have been, I think, I want to say 13 warrants have gone out for arrest. Um, 
I'm not sure how it's all going to play out. But I'm concerned about the fact that many people, especially uh, in Decatur, Georgia, these schools depend on those band scholarships to FAMU to get into school and get a college education. So the kids who are now in 11th and 12th grade, what do they have to do with this incident that happened at FAMU well, that you they know, should Well, let me tell you what, because I'm sure that that everyone may have, may, everybody may not have known, I mean, participated, but I'm quite sure that everybody knew about what was going on. And then the the responsibility still lied on the fact that they should have told somebody other than maybe their band member or the dean or somebody. The fact of the matter is, I think that Hazen should have a zero tolerance policy. That's just me. I mean, there have been other sororities and fraternities that have participated in Hazen and they shut them down for a period of time. They didn't have any representation of like deltas. But nobody whatever. comes into college. I understand. I understand what you're saying. Sorority or fraternity scholarship. That's that's what you need that to do. But happen. that's why you have to do what you got to do. If I'm going to school mm -hmm. for something like band or for basketball or whatever, and I know that something is going on that could affect my scholarship, why the hell am I sitting there laughing and kicking? That's what they have to realize. And as an adult, sometimes we do get penalized for things that we are a part of, may not agree with, but whatever the case may be, you have to learn that you have to have your own backbone to stand up. And that's just how I feel. I'm going to disagree. I'm mm -hmm. thinking, fam, you should continue the band program with a total different um, set of laws to govern what's going on. But this conversation gone on forever. Hazing has always been a problem, mm -hmm. like I said, in America. And we'll be back after the break. Welcome back to At the End of the Day. So we're going to do our last segment on a story that has come out concerning the George Zimmerman case, so to speak. is that in direct oh, correlation to it. Yeah. The SDLC um, has decided to have their national convention in Sanford, Florida. Mm -hmm. Some people are for it or some people are against it. I definitely understand what the SCLC is saying to let them know that they, they, they have a strong presence in Florida and to let them know that there are people who are on Trayvon's and side. And the SCLC is? Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Yeah. That's correct. A lot of people may not know that. Yes. I don't know why they wouldn't. But, but you know. Just in case you don't. Yeah, just in case. So what are you thinking about that? I'm, I'm, I definitely understand the SCLC's point of view of wanting to show a strong presence. Though I do also understand the people who say it's going to be an economic benefit to Sanford, Florida, and there's no reason to give Sanford any type of money from, it's definitely from an organization that has done so much in the black community. What are you thinking? Yeah, I guess I can understand that point, but the, but the, the means or the tactics that they have behind it, I understand what they're, where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And I, I commend them. I think it's great because they're not treating this as just, okay, we marched, he went to jail, it's we over. Know Sanford, yeah, right? well, let's move to the next topic. Like, this is something that they really want to put some teeth behind. And that's great. And I think that we should follow that movement, mm -hmm. follow that, just like we talked about before. Because, you know, Trayvon Martin, it was more i guess more of an eye opener like you said mm -hmm. it was kind of like man it was it's still really bad you know what i mean exactly. so i think that especially because it's got he was charged with second degree murder but you got off on a hundred fifty thousand dollar bail right bond mm -hmm. really but anyway yeah i think it'll let sanford know that people have yeah, not forgotten right. about this case it right. has died down a little bit in the media it has not gone away and i think it'll show a strong presence in florida with that group that has been so historical, like I said, in the black community of saying, mm -hmm. we haven't forgotten, we are here. Um, I don't, I, I, I'm just hoping that they won't do that much spending. So, you know, as much as, as little as possible. Right. Cause you've got to eat, you've got to get a hotel, you know, but not just shopping and all of that. Just really stay, I guess, within the hotel, do your activities and limit your spending and i think hmm. that will show a strong message in itself that they aren't out shopping around town and doing certain things right we'll have to be on zimmerman watch we hope you will be too thank you so much for joining us again today for Absolutely. at the end of the day i'm nicole and this is shanta and we have enjoyed talking with each other as we enjoy talking to you Again, we're on the B-Lane Network. As always, we are bringing it to you. And don't forget to check us out June 6th for the live show. Peace.